in Missouri. Please give it up for Mr. Rod Reyes, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up one more time for Jeremy Ritchie. Patrick Baggin in the back. What's up? What's up, Freeport, Illinois? Holy mackerel, Freeport, Illinois on a Saturday night. Feel the excitement. And nothing says middle America, Freeport, Illinois, like a Puerto Rican from New York. <laughs> Let's start out by uh, addressing, for me, the elephant in the room. Where did you come up with the name Freeport? See, you got the free part right, but maybe nobody explained port to you. Like, I don't see any ships or a harbor anywhere. Do the relatives come here and just park their kind of stole the wagon? It's a port! <laughs> No, it's a Puerto Rican! <laughs> oh, man! I, uh, I am originally from New York. I do live uh, in Kansas City now. And, and I have to say, uh, everything that I heard about people from the Midwest is true. You are lovely people. You are much nicer, much more polite than people are back east where I am from. Um, you've even learned to suffer politely. <laughs> no, 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 this is true. This is an actual commercial that you will hear in Kansas City. I didn't believe it when I first got here, but there's a commercial for a place in Kansas City, and they have a jingle on TV that goes, Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center, don't suffer in silence. <laughs> In New York, that commercial was, my butt crack is on fire! <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel. Give it up for Christie's, by the way. Thank you for supporting live comedy. And as you can see, all the profits go into the decor. <laughs> Places where you get you get a letter in the mail that says you're gonna meet members of the New York Yankees and you're gonna have lunch with Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera and then you show up and it's just cops with your overdue parking ticket. <laughs> do uh do visit New York. I recommend visiting New York. Awesome place. It can be intimidating, but. We have tour guides, qualified professionals, whose only job is to enhance and improve your Big Apple experience. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You know what we don't have? Tour guides that were born in New York City. I never had so many Africans trying to show me my own hometown. And they come out of the woodwork, they're like, come with me, my friend, come with me. Come with me, I will show you the sights of New York. Over there is the Empire Statue of Liberty building. <laughs> it is very tall, my friend. It would take a monkey a long time to climb to the top. Over there is FAO Schwartz. They make bagels for children. <laughs> and the entire time I'm thinking, you think they have tour guides from America in Nigeria? Like you get off the plane and it's Vinny from Brooklyn. He's like, hey, everybody! Focus your attention! Oh! A freaking lion! <laughs> New York can be politically correct, though. I have to say, last time I was there, I actually saw a protest rally to lower the size requirements for firemen. Because apparently little people in New York want to make it easier to become firemen. They're running around. <laughs> we have a right to become firemen! <laughs> like, no, leprechauns, no! <laughs> the last thing anybody wants to see when they're on the 70th story, work with me, 70th story! <laughs> That's like 70 of these buildings. <laughs> <laughs> last thing you want to see it's some little half a Mexican Oompa Loompa coming in. <laughs> follow me, follow me. I know the way out. We can fit through the pipes. <laughs> we represent the <laughs> Firemen need to be 300 pounds, 6 foot 10, ready, willing, and able to 
sling your screaming butt over their shoulders and carry you to safety. Because I don't care how hardcore you think you are, fire will make a punk out of you. <laughs> I see these guys come out of prison and yeah, I ain't scared. I've done a lot of time. I shoot them out. Fire! <laughs> Serve him up. <laughs> yeah. He's sucking down the beers. That's what I like. This is a drinking crowd. I like a drinking crowd. I will only say one thing. If you drink beer, drink real beer. Do not waste your time with non-alcoholic beer. Is that a non-alcoholic beer? Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. Oh, please, there's only one reason to drink beer, and that's to get plastered. If you don't know that, write that down. <laughs> Working on it. Yeah, beer's not that tasty a beverage. You acquire a taste for it. You learn to like it. So it's like cigarettes. And I guarantee you, nobody in the history of tobacco ever took their first bud and went, What's your name, sir? If you don't mind me asking. What's your Joe. name? I'm sorry? Joe. Joe. Now you're having a beer, you're enjoying it. Joe, do you remember why you had your very first beer? Peer pressure. Oh my God, he nailed it! Give him a round of applause! Exactly right! Exactly so! You were about, you were about 11 years old. You were in the middle of the woods, four feet from this place. circle around <laughs> drink it drink it drink it you pussy drink it joey 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 <laughs> you choked it down you spilled half of it over your shirt you went home mommy they made me drink it it's like people who think coffee is a drug it's not a drug it's bean juice <laughs> LSD is a drug. You take it from Rod, a veteran of over 870 acid trips. I'm here to tell you, you could suck down all the bean juice in the world, and you are still never going to hallucinate Juan Valdez walking a mule through a supermarket. You grab a pack of diet cookies off the shelf, and a black woman hops out of nowhere and goes, Hi, cookie man! part of the drunk. <laughs> Give us, stay on the laughing part of the uh, drunk and your friend is already on the fighting part of the drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like he spits up on his shoes and you're like, <laughs> ah, look at his shoe! <laughs> ah, what the hell's wrong with my shoe? <laughs> so let me tell you some things I will not talk about in my act. I don't talk about everything, I'm restricted. Uh, I do not talk about porn. And the reason I do not is porn does not answer the questions that I have about porn. Such as, why is it that everybody that's ever been in a porn movie, a porn star? <laughs> there are no porn extras. <laughs> which is what I want to be. <laughs> Just somebody in the backdrop with his junk flapping in the breeze <laughs> for no other reason than to give a little depth and color to the story. <laughs> but I also do not like porn because there's nothing in it for me. There's nothing in it for me. I could stand outside of an ATM for hours watching people pull out money, and it's not going to make me feel any less broke. <laughs> I'd have to stand behind you and make up my, uh, my own, like, porn ATM scenario. I'd stand behind you, I'd be like, stick the card in slow. <laughs> stick the card in, pull it out slow. Oh, it's not reading the card? 
wet it down. Now finger the buttons. Finger the buttons. Ooh, how much do I want? I want it all. Will I pay the fee? Yeah, I'm gonna pay the fee. I'm so close. I'm so close. Oh my God! Would I like another transaction? <laughs> Not right away. <laughs> Daddy's got to reload. <laughs> oh, man. Don't talk about weed. Don't talk about weed, because there's nothing funny about an old man with short-term memory loss. <laughs> Young people smoke weed, you forget things, it's funny. It's like, <laughs> I start to forget stuff people want to put me in a home. <laughs> I mean, I used to smoke weed. Maybe too much weed. You know you're smoking too much weed when you drop the bag and then you sweep it up. And you end up sweeping back twice as much as you dropped in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you can shake a dime bag out of the cat. <laughs> or eat it. I hope they bring legal uh, legal weed here because it uh, it creates income. And listen, if you're worried about drugs crossing the border, that's the way to shut it down. No money, no drugs. Simple. Grow it home. Tax it here. Get the money. Do what you need to do. All right, that's what I believe. Because I'll tell you what, they tax it and legalize it. What? There should be enough money to send all of your kids through four years of the best colleges in the world. Yeah. And you know what's the best part? Imagine how good you're going to feel when you're sparking up that blunt going, <laughs> this one's for the kids. <laughs> to go to these legal places, man. You know, because when, when, when I used to buy weed, you buy it from the weed man. And he knew he was doing something illegal, so he didn't have time to give you a song and dance. Best you could hope for is if you had a black dealer and, and maybe you get a little poem. He'd be like, yo, 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 yo. I got the herb that's gonna make you swerve. I got the smoke that's gonna make you choke. I got the grass that's gonna bust your ass. Well, you're having a nice conversation, aren't you? Yeah. Like, I don't hear it. Like, we have to talk, girl. Where can we go that we can have a private chat? I know, a comedy room. <laughs> that guy that's been doing it for 20 years at the mic and the light will never notice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just a cranky old man. What can I say? <laughs> I'm old! Man! People are dying left and right. I'm 66. I just heard David Bowie died at 69. Lemmy died. He was what? 67. It's like scary. I'm at the age now where if I die, no one will be surprised. They'll be like, what? Rod Reyes died? I didn't see that coming. He said no one ever. <laughs> You'll be all right. Lemmy did a lot of drugs. Uh, well, so did I, buddy. Well, I, am, uh, I am pickled. <laughs> It's true, man. I did get proof the other day, and that was sweet, man. I got proof. Nothing makes an old man feel better than having somebody ask for his ID. Because they ain't giving out that senior discount to just anybody. <laughs> you gotta earn it. Certain things you can and can't do as an old man. You gotta be careful. You are beautiful. You are just stunning. You're beautiful. The women here are gorgeous. But I can't say that. Well, I can say it in here because they're witnesses. If I said it in the parking lot, just you and me, beat it, you old pervert! <laughs> I gotta be careful, what do I say to a young girl? I see a pretty girl in the street, oh, the best I can do is, you look like you had a lovely upbringing. <laughs> you see these beautiful women, and all I'm thinking is, 
I'm too old <laughs> for her mother. <laughs> when you're too old for the MILF, life is over as you know it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm never going to be one of these old guys that goes on and on and on about how great things were in the old days. I mean, some things were, but not everything. Some of you remember television before cable. It sucked. <laughs> there were only three channels, but my father would turn the dial like he was going to discover a mystery channel from Venus. <laughs> and he'd say, he see, Brr, CBS. And my mother would come, and, you know you're going to break it. I don't care. I'll pay the bills here. Brr. <laughs> Next day, there he'd be turning the channels with a pair of pliers. <laughs> And if you weren't facing the broadcast tower, all you got was fuzz and wiggly lines. You know what they had for reception? An antenna. <laughs> they used to call them rabbit ears. You know why? Because your father would make you hop around with it. Over here! Over here! No, no, no! Over here! Over here! Spread them out! Spread them out! Put them together! Put them together! Right. And then sooner or later, he would put the aluminum foil between them. <laughs> because there's nothing that transmission broadcast waves can't be... Oh, is that aluminum? <laughs> Help, Liz. It was awful. I'm going to recreate television for you before a cable. This was it. Because there were these bars that would come in front of the TV like this. <laughs> like, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Lucy! Ah, break it! But there was this button in the back of the TV called the vertical hold, right? But it never really held it. It just sort of slowed him down. <laughs> and then sooner or later, it would stop, and you could see half the head up here and half down there. The Tell you one thing that was better, though. Back in the old days, we had the phone. Some of you laugh, you know the phone. The big, gigantic, black phone that your grandmother had. The one that weighed 3,000 pounds. Yeah. And you could use the receiver to club Al-Qaeda and wild animals. And it had a cord you could dangle off of Mount Everest. And ringtones be damned, it had the coolest sound ever, like, shh, shh, shh. But the best part about the phone that no technology will replace is that every time you picked up the phone, you got a human being at the other end of it. <laughs> this is not progress. You want to know where our jobs went? There used to be people called operators that would answer the phone. And you'd call up your insurance uh, agent, you'd get into a car accident. Hello, hello, I, I've got to speak to my agent. Oh, uh, can you hold for just a second? I'll see if he's there. And they may hold you for a little while, but then they pick up. Are you still there? Let me connect you with Mr. Johnson. End of story. Not anymore. You get into a traffic accident, you call up your insurance company, and it's like, hello. Welcome to the GEICO Insurance Automated System. <laughs> Please listen carefully to the following menu. <coughs> Choose and be aware that we can change the menu anytime we feel like it. <laughs> if you want to initiate a claim, press one. Psych, we meant two. <laughs> if you want to increase your coverage, press three. If you really believe a human is ever going to answer this phone, find a real phone and shove it up your rear end. <laughs> And now, an hour and a half of obnoxious music interrupted frequently by self-serving commercials. My milkshake plays are poison, yeah, milkshake is poison. Milkshake is poison. Geico is the best insurance in the world. State Farm sucks rhino farts. <laughs> we uh, appreciate your call. It's very important to us. Please continue to hold it. Be answered in the order in which it receives. <laughs> to amuse yourself, why not enter all 100 digits of your account number? <laughs> and don't screw it up, because there'll be a quiz. 
right? So you enter the, your account number, right? And there actually is a test. But it's never the same voice that you've been listening to. It's that fragmented voice. The one that goes, if the number you have entered is one, two, four, three, more. <laughs> two hours later, somebody picks up the phone. What's the first thing they ask for? Your account number! <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> The worst is when they say, this call may be monitored for quality insurance. Yeah. What? There were two of you! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, man, I'm actually at the age now where I, I like sleep better than I like sex. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you laugh. <laughs> Now riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> if sex is superior to sleep, why is it that when you die and you go to your final reward, they write on your tombstone, rest in peace, not diddly through infinity? <laughs> There's a place for a nap, is all I'm saying. <laughs> You know, I try to stay current, I try to stay hip. It's hard to be hip and old, you gotta make sacrifices. I can't dress like I did when I was 20, but I do have piercings. At one point or another, I had my ears pierced, I had my eyebrow and labret pierced. I still have a nose ring. I have my nipple pierced. That's pretty cool. The old part, I want to see if I can get them all paid for by Medicare. <laughs> I got ink. Yeah, that's hats. My friends warned me, like when I first got them, they said, Rod, be careful, ink is forever. Make sure it's something that you need to remember forever. So I got my social security and my address. I'm only kidding. It's your party. I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm never going to be one of these old guys that tells young people that their music sucks. I mean, some of it does. You know? <laughs> umbrella, umbrella, A, 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 Ella, 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 A. <laughs> That was a Rihanna joke, man. You think it's funny or does it need to be punched up? <laughs> like my parents used to make fun of my music because they said the lyrics didn't make any sense. Are you kidding me? My parents were the World War II generation. They had songs that went, hold tight. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Brrr, yapa sapa seafood, mama. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's some setting the world stuff right there. <laughs> Every generation has songs with hinky lyrics. We had a, a band when I was a kid called The Doors. Right? People wear the t shirt, never heard of the band. But Jim Morrison would sing, When you're strange, no one remembers your name when you're strange. Bull snot. <laughs> when you're strange, people will remember your name till the day you die. <laughs> remember Old Cross's Arms Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't he mowing my lawn? <laughs> uh, we got lost on the way here. I was afraid to ask somebody for directions. Uh, I thought they'd offer me a job. <laughs> <laughs> Stand on my porch and hold this lamp. <laughs> Oh, I go 
there, man. <laughs> Another band we had, we had a band called The Clash. Yeah. yeah. Again, people wear the, uh, the shirt don't know the band. The Clash would sing, Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble. If I stay, it will be double. And I'm like, well, there's your answer. <laughs> Sounds like straight arithmetic to me. <laughs> Take your double trouble butt out of my apartment complex. I got outstanding warrants. Beat it. <laughs> when, I was a, when I was a younger guy and I used to hang out in the discos, everything related to dancing, you know, no matter how complicated the problems of the world, it would sooner or later end up dance. That was a song that went, I took my troubles to the dance floor. <laughs> you think you could do that today? <laughs> like, yeah, baby. Uh, uh, I just took out a third mortgage on my house. <laughs> <laughs> my benefit's about to run out. I can't put my kids through college. Where are you moonwalking off to? <laughs> <laughs> parents have been complaining about kids' music ever since they've been parents, kids, and music. Yeah. All right? I'm willing to bet Beethoven's father probably told them, Ah, you leave and let me! What are you listening to? La, 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 la. How can you listen to this shit? What are you, deaf? <laughs> Uh, put on a concert here. Yeah, I like to do things like that. Uh, I'm a big music fan. I'm a metalhead. Not to, you wouldn't know to look at me, but I, I like I like metal. I like strange music, hard music. And what I want to do is I want to put on a concert right here, and you are going to help me. Uh, we are going to put on a concert like a major, a major arena, okay? And you guys are going to help me out with the snare drum. I'm going to do the bass drum all by myself. You guys are going to help me out with the snare drum. And we are going to bring to the stage one of my favorite artists, multi-Grammy award-winning nine-inch nails. And those of you that know, know. And those of you who don't, will. So here we go. You ready? Just remember, only the snare, I got the bass. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, multi-platinum award-winning artist, Nine Inch Nails! <laughs> you make me complicated. <laughs> you make me desecrate you. You let me violate you. You let me penetrate you. Help me, you torn apart my inside. Help me, your sex I can smell. Help me, you make me perfect. Help me think I'm somebody else. I wanna. I want to hump you like a camel. Yeah. <laughs> and all I'm thinking is, why on earth would anybody want to screw like an animal? You ever see the Discovery Channel, see a couple of lions going at it? It never looks that interesting. It's always the same. It's always Mr. Lion on top of Mrs. Lion with his paws crossed on her back. And you know. In the middle of it, he does the lion yawn. Interested if he sees another lion and he's like, Oh, yeah, mommy, mommy. 
Mommy, you look very sexy. I like your clothes. Where did you get them painted? No, no, come on, leave me the digits. She don't mean nothing. I'll tell you one thing men will do. Men will brag to their friends that they made love to you so sublimely that they made you make animal sounds during the course of lovemaking. Because every man wants to feel like a stud. Oh yeah, he brags. <laughs> he tells his friend, man, I was hitting it last night. She was like an animal. She was possessed. She's scratching me. She's howling like a coyote. She's like, oh, oh my God, oh baby, oh, oh my God. that she started singing like the background singers in a Pink Floyd song. <laughs> <laughs> then you got something. Yeah, she's like, oh, right, oh, my God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that the human sound? I would hope so. <laughs> I would really hope so. Because the only other distinguishable human sound is conversation, and that, you know, that could get kind of hinky. <laughs> Wash the dishes? Huh? 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 <laughs> you know, they pick up the garbage tomorrow to take out the recycling? Huh? Huh? <laughs> you don't hear that. Yeah, you don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got to, uh, one of the things I love about this job, um, I, I, I said this in all, all seriousness, it's true, I love traveling. And I, I've seen most of the big cities uh, in the country, and I actually enjoy seeing the smaller towns. Um, I like seeing uh, this part of America, and, and I'm not I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. This is this is true. I, I just love I love being out here, and, you know. But I will peek at your stuff. I do not care. You got something to show me? I will see it. I'm a very good tourist, man. Weirdest place I ever been was was uh, was Texas. I got to say, Texas was strange. You know, first of all, I don't know if you know this, but if you don't have a gun. When you get to the border, they give you one. <laughs> Here, buddy, it's a two-shot minimum. Go shoot a Mexican and one hiding behind a cactus. <laughs> Texas is weird, man. Like, I don't get it. That whole little Lone Star State, Lone Star. Don't mess with Texas. And they think they have their own separate history. But if you ask a Texan what is the quintessential episode of Texas history, what do you think they'll come up with? Elmo. Exactly, Elmo. still, as if it happened yesterday. And I'm like, 1840, God knows when. Get over it. Move on with your lives. <laughs> it wasn't that significant an event. Basically, these people's ancestors stole land from Mexico. And I'm thinking, big hoop de doo Anybody can steal land from Mexico. I can gut a couple of Amish people and take land from Mexico. <laughs> Mexico never won a war. And, and if you think about it historically, the Mexicans snatched that same land from the Indians. So if I were going to sympathize with anyone, I should sympathize with the Indian, the noble American red man. And that always sounds like such a great idea. So you set foot in an Indian reservation casino. <laughs> they are 
winning the whole country back, buddies. <laughs> every roll of the dice, every spin of the roulette wheel brings them an inch closer to owning your house. <laughs> I was at a place in Indiana, the chief said, Rod, if we had known this in 1492, Columbus would have went home naked in a rowboat. <laughs> Here's a guy, by the way, who gets a little bit too much credit, Christopher Columbus. And now he gets, gets a holiday. Mind you, we'll take it. Why? Because it's a paid holiday. And that's all we care about. That is all Americans care about. We would celebrate Hitler's birthday. We don't care. Am I getting paid? Yes, sir. <laughs> you wouldn't even buy your electronics. You'd wait for the Hitler Day sale. <laughs> hey, man, want to buy a TV? Nah, I'm waiting for the Hitler Day sale. I heard you can go down to Best Buy and chew them down. You figured out that you're a little far from Green Bay? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's right around the corner! <laughs> oh, man. I that. <laughs> but Christopher Columbus doesn't deserve. He doesn't deserve a holiday because he didn't do what they said. He did. When we were in school, what did they say he did? He discovered America. Bullshit. You can't discover something that's already here. There were people walking around on this continent for tens of thousands of years, and I'm pretty sure they weren't walking around going, oh my God, I am so lost. <laughs> Only some kindly European would come along and shove the Spanish flag up my rear end. I would have some sense of purpose. Second of all, he didn't land in America. He landed on the Western Hemisphere, but he landed in Puerto Rico. That's where he landed in the Caribbean. And he wasn't even looking for Puerto Rico. He was looking for India. Wrong way! He said, hey, look, Indians. And I know the Puerto Ricans had to be thinking, yo, Chris, why, why don't you take another look around? <laughs> <laughs> Do you smell any curry? <laughs> Did you see any painted elephants? <laughs> you see anybody wearing a turban? <laughs> Do you see anybody working in the 7-Eleven? <laughs> You're lost, man. <laughs> Wanna play dice? <laughs> oh, you got your Indians in the 7-Eleven, man. I know you do. What cracks me up about them, man, is like, no matter where they are, you ask them for directions, you can't get there from wherever they are. <laughs> Can you tell me where uh, Freeport is? Or you can't get there from here. <laughs> It would be impossible. Can't do it. Can't do it. If you were across the street, you could do it across the street, but over here can't get to people. <laughs> but you're a triangle. Can't do it. <laughs> I love the Indians, man. Because they try to curse and they haven't figured it out yet. They're like, make them eat it, make it, your, your mother butter. <laughs> A mother butter, peanut butter. <laughs> Sandwich cookie from Nabisco. <laughs> oh, man. Jeremy's ripped, man. I, I, I worked out with him today, I, and I still go to the gym, but I, we have different goals. <laughs> you know, he wants to be a babe magnet, you know. Me, my fitness 
is based entirely on economics. <coughs> See, it is vital to my personal economy that I fit into the clothing I own. Because <laughs> buying a new wardrobe is out of the question, man. But I'm intimidated when I go to the gym, man. Things have changed. Like, even when I was in my 50s, you know, young guys would see me, they'd hey, looking good, old man. Looking good. You want me to spot you? You want another rep? Come on, man, you can do it. Looking good, old man. I'll spot you. We'll get you another rep. <laughs> now I go in there and a spot is, hey, old timer, can I help you find your locker? <laughs> I just don't like the expression that people use in the gym, the jocks, the, the lifting heads, man. They say things that bug me like, come on, man, pain is just fear leaving the body. <laughs> what a crap is that? That is garbage, and every man here knows it. And I can prove it, because every man in this room has had his nutsack flicked once in his life. <laughs> it may have been a flick, it may have been a full punt field goal. <laughs> right? And it hurts to think about. <laughs> you want to know why? Because you're still afraid! <laughs> Pain is intelligence yeah. entering the body. <laughs> They say things like, uh, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You serious? I've had tuberculosis, hepatitis, gallbladder surgery. I've had a knee replacement. I should have a superpower by now. It doesn't have to be a great one, but I don't know, like, maybe the ability to tell when a joke doesn't work. <laughs> I actually do have a superpower, a good one. I can pick out with 100% accuracy a perfume that my wife will not like. <laughs> oh, man. So I uh, started reading the Bible. Well, and by the way, I, I want to start out by saying, you know, I understand that the Midwest is the Bible Belt, and I am not making fun of people's faith. I want to make this very, very clear. I tell jokes for a living, but to have faith in today's world, to me, is one of the greatest acts of courage you could possibly have. But I read the Bible because... At my age, you got to hedge your bets. You know how it is. <laughs> you live the life of sin, and all of a sudden you get close. Wait a minute. <laughs> what if? you got to hedge your bets. My problem is that as a comic, I ask questions. And I should. I know you're supposed to just accepting, but I ask questions. I like I was reading the Ten Commandments, right? And don't steal and don't kill her in there but they're not in the top five. <laughs> the number one commandment out of 10, the most important one, isn't even a commandment, it's like a proclamation. It's like, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And I'm like, whoever wrote this is making God sound paranoid. <laughs> and needy. And I don't know about you, but I do not want the creator of all there is and all there ever will be to be on shaky ground. I want my God to be confident, like a drug dealer that knows he has the best shit on the street. I want God to be like, go on in! Go see what kind of garbage they got up on the next corner. And when you come crawling back, it's going to be double. Like, I was reading the creation. Again, I got through the first three days. Day four, I'm, like, asking questions. 
Because <laughs> like, and God called forth upon the waters to give forth abundantly of the creatures that had life to walk upon the earth and fowl to fly in the open firmament of heaven. <laughs> Except you, penguin. <laughs> started on a chicken. <laughs> chicken spends his whole life being jealous of a duck. <laughs> and I think God got distracted when he was handing out the powers, man. He was like, duck, you can swim. Huh? Uh, duck, you can fly. Chicken's like, what about me? Chicken, you taste delicious. <laughs> Serious, man. I try to I try to read and I try to get the the the, the morals of the story. Some of them I, I don't get. Like like it was Cain and Abel, right? And and uh, they had to make sacrifices. And uh, Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a farmer. So they had to sacrifice. Well, I mean, how are you gonna compete? Abel gave God some lamb chops. <laughs> Abel didn't even give him mint jelly. He probably gave him asparagus or some shit. <laughs> so God didn't like the vegetables. What else is new? <laughs> so Cain gets mad, he kills Abel. What's the moral of that story? A vegan will stab you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> then I got to the part about thank you by the way for understanding that these are jokes <laughs> get to the part about tithing See, anybody know what tithing is yeah. it's an old way and it's, now let me tell you what, God did not have shit to do with that I'm sorry that was some guy that just said there's got to be a way I can get something out of this racket <laughs> half the people in the world couldn't read you get somebody, what does it say? It says, you've got to give me 10%. <laughs> you give it 10%, we're not, we're not God's children, we're sharecroppers. <laughs> and I was thinking, what if you're late with your payment? Does he send like a couple of thug angels to lean on you? <laughs> like, hey, Ezekiel, do not run. I see you. Get over here. <laughs> Then you get the other angel, he's like Rocky. Hey, you should have planned ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Some things I don't understand in life, period. You know, I don't understand why gay marriage is, is still like a thing. I just don't understand it. Gay people, I believe, have an absolute right to the same joy and happiness and bliss that all the rest of us feel waking up day after day with the same person and their little complaints about, oh, you didn't screw the cap back on the toothpaste and you left the seat up off the toilet paper. Come on, gay people. Marriage is a <laughs> there are people, people who think gay marriage like assaults the sanctity of, of heterosexual marriage. I'm like, how? They're marrying other gay people. Right? Like they are not coming after your pot-belly, balding, losing his teeth, crack of his ass showing, driving a snow plow in Johnson County, Illinois. <laughs> and guys, if you are afraid of a lesbian woman taking your wife away, get better at giving head. <laughs> Some people say, well, it's my right. I'm not going to sell them a cake. That'll show them. <laughs> no cake for you. I'm not making you a cake. Yes, my beliefs. You know how I know that's bullshit? Because no 
diamond merchant has walked away from a ring sale. <laughs> you can get all high and mighty with your little $70 cake, but to walk away from a $10,000 diamond sale, you gotta really love Jesus. <laughs> Some people believe that gay is a matter of choice. How does that even work? You just wake up one morning and go, hey! <laughs> ah, you know that knob gobbling thing I've been putting off? <laughs> well, today's the day! <laughs> today's the day because it's my choice! <laughs> He's gonna ralph into his hat, man. <laughs> If you could choose to be gay, doesn't it follow that you could choose the degree of gayness to which you aspire? I mean, why on earth would anybody choose hey! when a symbol hey will do? You may choose to go skiing, doesn't mean you go down this triple suicide death diamond drop. You go on the bunny slopes to see if it's a good fit. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> are lifting my spirits, man. You guys, you guys are lifting my spirits. I swear to God. Man. I, was, I was so depressed when I came here, man. I was just so depressed because my agent uh, wanted to send me out for a Viagra commercial. I was, I was like, oh my, he said, Rod, it's, it's great money. It's a national product. You'll make a fortune. I know, but it's Viagra. He said, Rod, You'll be all over the... I know, but I don't know what's worse. Being the spokesperson for men with a soggy manicotti? <laughs> or being like that Nimrod on TV that like, Ed's happy. 